In this tutorial, we're going to show you how to request random numbers using API 3's Quantum Random Number Generator. We will request both a single number and an array of multiple random numbers from the error node contract. So you'll see that we'll have a single number return, and with an array, we should have an array of different numbers on request. Let's go ahead and get started. We're starting with an empty workspace on Remix. I just named it QRNG example with an empty .sol file. We'll go ahead and choose our Pragma version on our license. If we type in Pragma, we'll have the autofill. It'll choose our license identifier as MIT. And at the time of this tutorial, we're going to use 0.8.9 for our Solidity version. We will call our contract QRNG example. And we're ready to build. Next, we will want to import API 3's Air Node Request Response Library into our contract with our RP Requester v0. You can grab this from the documents, but I'll paste it here. The way the request response works is a two transaction type of system in which our smart contract requests a random number generation on the first transaction and then receives a response on the second transaction. This library requires that we supply the Air Node address of the chain that we are using in our constructor. So we'll go ahead and pass that in. In our constructor, we will have an address, and we'll call that air node, request response, and it'll pass it into the library constructor, RRP, requester, version zero, and it'll take in that address, air node, RRP. We want to make sure that we import this library into our contract. So we're going to go to the QRNG example. We'll type in is. It'll be RRP requester version zero. And we're ready to go. Next, we will have to set up our contract to accept requesting parameters. These are the parameters we need to be able to send the correct requests to the air node so we can get a proper response in return. First, we'll make global parameters to make things a little bit simpler. So just within our contract, we will create an address. Make it public and set that to air node. We will call endpoints from the API node. Those are of type bytes 32. Make those public. And we'll call it endpoint ID uint 256. For this demo, we're also going to call another endpoint that returns an array of numbers. So we're going to have another bytes 32 public and we'll call it endpoint ID UN256 array. And then we're going to have another address and we'll make that public. And this will be our sponsor wallet. This is the wallet that handles the gas. Okay, so let's go ahead and make our function. We're going to drop down just underneath the constructor and we're going to create a function. We'll call it set request parameters. And it's going to take in our four inputs. So we're going to have an address and we'll have an air node as a local. It'll have bytes 32 and we'll have an endpoint ID UN256. We'll have another bytes 32 and it'll be endpoint ID uint256 array and then we'll have an address and we'll call that sponsor wallet we'll go ahead and make this external and then follow up and all we're going to do is set our global variables to the local ones so we're going to have air node to air node endpoint to endpoint or endpoint UN256, our single number, to our single number, our endpoint array, to our local variable, and our sponsor wallet, to our sponsor wallet. And there, our function is done. If you recall, the request receive library requires a two transaction system. We must first request a number and then make a function to receive it. 
we will first make this request function. So let's go ahead and make space. We'll call it function, and we'll call it make request UN256. It won't take any arguments because it's a single number. It'll be external. So we can call it for this example. And here we go. The request type is a bytes32. So we're going to go ahead and make a bytes32. And we'll call it request ID. And we will set it equal to a function from our library called air node RRP. Node RRP. And then we're going to call make full request. Make full request. And you see that it autofills quite a few arguments. We'll go through it one by one. But one, obviously, is the air node. It'll be the address of our air node. Then we need the endpoint ID. Then we have the sponsor address, the sponsor wallet, the fulfill address, where is the number going to go to, the fulfill function, what function is going to be called when it returns a number to us, and any parameters. But let's go ahead and clear this out so we can go through it one by one so you can see it's specific for our app and make some space for some clarity. So the first thing is going to be our air node, which is just going to be air node. And that's our air node address. The endpoint that we are requesting from in this function is the single number. So that's endpoint ID UN256. Then it needs the sponsoring address, which is this address. So that would be the address this. Then it's going to ask who's sponsoring this. That's the sponsor wallet. Then it's going to ask what is the fulfillment address. That happens to be the same contract as this, so that's address this. The fulfill function ID gets a little tricky because it's based on the function name of our receiver function, which we haven't made yet, but we will call this fulfill UN256. So let's go ahead and call that. It's going to be contract this. We're going to call our function name fulfill UN256. And then we're going to go with selector. It will be read because we haven't made it yet. Finally, we'll have our call data parameters. For a single number, it doesn't require any, so we're just going to go ahead and leave it empty. There we go. And this function is just about complete. Now we want a way to keep track of our requests. What if we make multiple requests from the same contract? We want a way to identify each request. So we will make a mapping to see if our request ID is expecting to be fulfilled. So let's go ahead and go to the top. And just underneath, we'll go ahead and make that mapping. The mapping will be of types byte 32. So we go mapping bytes 32. And we're going to set it to a Boolean. It'll be public. And we'll give it a very specific name, expecting request with ID to be fulfilled. This way we will know that if we send out a request, this ID will be expecting one back and we can set that to true. And if it's not, then it'll be false. So let's go ahead and go back down. And now that we have this mapping set, we can set our mapping to true. Expecting request with ID to be fulfilled. We'll map that to our request ID. And we will set that equal to true. So now that we make the request, we're letting our contract know that we are expecting a number in return. And then we'll go ahead and emit the event. Request UN256. And we'll tie it to our request ID. We will then go up to the top and add this to our events. Request. UN 256, and it's going to be of type bytes 32, indexed, and it'll be the request ID. Okay, that is our requesting function. As the request is sent to the air node, it generates the result and then makes a function call back to our contract via fulfillment function. Note that the fulfillment time varies per chain for confirmation blocks. Please check in our docs for the different confirmation times per chain. This function will be our fulfill function. So let's go ahead and go back down and create our fulfill function. 
this function will be called fulfill uint 256. And it will take in two arguments, the first one being a bytes 32. And that's going to be our request ID. The second argument is going to be our data that we're receiving from the air node, and that's in format of bytes. So it'll be bytes, call data, and we'll call it data. This will be external, as it is being called from the air node contract to our contract. And then we have a modifier from our request response requester version 0 library. It gives us a modifier of who and what data can be sent to our smart contract function. It's called only air node request response. So we'll go ahead and input that here. Only air node request response. And we're ready to start building our function. We want to make sure that any numbers received have been requested by our contract. We will check the mapping to make sure that the request ID received is the one that we requested. So we're going to go ahead and do a requirement. So we'll require expecting request with ID to be fulfilled with the request ID. If we don't have any specific request ID set to true, then this will revert. We'll say request ID unknown. If we are receiving a request ID with that mapping, we can now set it to false because we now have received it. So we'll go expect and request ID to be fulfilled. And with that request ID, we can go ahead and set that to false. Now we will want to decode the data that we received. For the simplicity of this example and to be able to view the numbers, we're going to set it to a global variable. So let's go ahead and go up and set a global variable just underneath our sponsor wallet. We'll create a uint 256, make that public so we can see it. And we will call this urng uint256. Let's go ahead and go back down. So we're going to set our public variable, qrng uint256. And we will set it equal to abi.decode. And we will decode the data that we received. And it will return us a uint256. Close that out. Great. Now that we have a number, we can do whatever we want with it. So I'm going to go ahead and comment out, do what you wish with this number. We can do anything we want. We can mint an NFT. We can call a separate function with this new number. We can assign it to many different things. The choices are yours. And now that we have received a number, we'll go ahead and emit an event. We'll emit received uint256. And we received it with our request ID and our public QRNG number. Perfect. And then we'll go up and create that event just underneath our other event. We'll say event received uint256. And it'll be a bytes32 index. Request ID and a UNT two fifty six response. And we have completed our request response function for a single number. We could stop here and deploy, but let's set up this contract to also request an array of random numbers. Maybe we need multiple numbers for rolling dice for a game or setting up various stats for an NFT. So let's build out these functions. We're going to go ahead and drop down just underneath our fulfill, make out some space, and you'll see it'll be very similar. We're going to create a function, and we're going to call it make request uint256 array. It's going to take in one argument. That argument's going to be the amount of numbers we want in return. So it'll be uint256 size. How many numbers do we want? It'll be external. So we can call it from our example. And it's going to follow the same format. It's going to be of type bytes32. We'll call it request ID. It'll be calling air node request response from our library. And then a make full request.
So it'll take in our error node address. We're gonna make our endpoint call, but instead of a single number, we're gonna have an array call. So we're gonna have endpoint ID UN256 array, which is just right here. We're gonna say who the calling address is. That's this address, address that this. It's gonna ask for the sponsor wallet. We're gonna put in the sponsor wallet address. It's gonna say who's the receiving address. That's also this contract, so address this. And now that tricky part again, where we have that return function call, we haven't made it yet, but we're gonna call it fulfill UN256 array. So we're gonna go this and fulfill UN256 array. And then we'll have selector. And the most unique part about this function call is the call data parameters. We will have to encode a request with a type of bytes 32 to let it know that we want a return of UN256 and the size of our request. So we'll go abi.encode, and then it's gonna take in our arguments, which is bytes 32, and we're gonna let it know that it's a type one new, which is UN256. We are also gonna have another bytes 32, and we're gonna let it know about our size, and we're gonna have a secondary argument for our size. Complete. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this autofill and fix this correctly, right here. Remember the fulfill UN256 array will be read because we haven't created the function just yet. But now we'll create a mapping, expecting our request ID to be fulfilled. We will mark that true with our request ID. Because we have made the request. And we'll go ahead and emit the event. So we'll go ahead and emit requested UN256 array. It'll take in the request ID and the size of our request. Let's go ahead and create that event at the top. And just underneath our events, we'll go event requested uint256 array. It'll take in the bytes 32 indexed request ID and also take in our UN256 dot. Now our request is complete. Now we can work on the response. We're gonna go back down and do our response function. So just underneath our request, a function, fulfill, UN256 array. It's going to take in two arguments, our bytes 32, request ID, and our bytes call data. Data. It will be an external call, as the air node will call this. And we're going to use that same modifier, only air node RRP. We're going to check to make sure the request ID being called to our function was requested by this contract. So we're going to go require. Expecting request with ID to be fulfilled with our request ID. If that's not true, then we'll go ahead and say request ID is not known. If it is, we'll go ahead and send it to false because now it has been returned. So we'll go expect request with ID to be fulfilled with that request ID. And we'll go ahead and set that to false. Now we can decode our requested data. For this example, we're gonna set that to a public variable. So let's go up to the top. And just underneath our other public variable, we'll create a uint256 array. Set that to public so we can read it. And we will call that QRNG uint256 array. Okay, let's go ahead and go back down. And we'll set a new public variable, QRNG uint256 array. And we're gonna go ahead and decode that with abi.decode. And it will be the data that we received of type UN256 
All right. Close that out. And here, now that we have an array of numbers, I'm going to put the comment, do what you want with the numbers. Again, we have an array of numbers. So let's say you had a poker deck or rolling the dice. This is where you would call functions with our return numbers. You can do this internally. For this example, we're doing it publicly so we can see it. But you can do as you wish with this. We will go ahead and emit the event that we received the numbers. So we'll go emit and received. You went 256 array with our request ID and our public QR int. You went 256 array. And then we're going to go ahead and go up to the top and create the event just underneath all our other events. We'll go event received. You went 256 array of types bytes 32 indexed request ID and the uint 256 array of response. And this completes our contract. We're now ready to deploy. We will head over to our compiler to make sure everything's looking good. We're gonna make sure our compiler version is the same version as our pragma, it looks good. I have autocompile, so we are compiling correctly. We'll head over to our deployer. We're gonna go ahead and drop down and choose our injector provider. I have MetaMask. It should automatically pick up the version network that you have. I have Polygon Mumbai with my wallet ready to go. We wanna make sure that the contract we have selected is the one we wanna deploy, which is our qrng.sol. And we're just about ready to deploy. The one thing that is required is we need an address for our AirNode RDP in our constructor. We're gonna grab that from the docs at api3.org. Go ahead and go up docs.api3.org. We're going to head down to QRNG reference. Here we're going to look at the chains. You'll see that we have a few options for us. The ANU is from Mainnet. That's the Australian National University quantum number generator. You'll see that each chain has different confirmations. Depending on the chain that you use, you will have different wait times. The notary is for all test nets. You'll see that the minimum confirmation is just one. We can scroll down. And we also have Quintensis, which is a new number generator option as well. There are fewer options, but they are available for testing. What we need is the notary. So we'll go ahead and scroll back up and make sure that we're on our testnet and grab our polygon address. So we'll grab that, paste it in our air node, and send out the transaction. We'll send it for a little bit higher for speed and send that transaction. Great. And if we look over at our contract, we look like we're ready to work. Before requesting any random numbers, we have to set up our request parameters for this to work. We'll go over here to our set request parameters. You'll see that it requires four inputs, a global air node address, our two endpoints, one for a single number, one for an array, and a sponsor wallet. We'll have to go to the docs at api3.org in order to find this. We're gonna look at our providers. With our providers, we're gonna get the majority of addresses that we need. If we scroll down, we wanna make sure that we're using the correct numbers. These are the ANU random numbers that we'll use for mainnet. We are currently working on testnet, so we're gonna need the notaries. If we scroll down lower, you'll see that we have the notary pseudo random numbers. Here, we're going to grab our global air node. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that over and paste that in our air node. Next, we need the endpoint UN256. So we're going to go ahead and grab that. We're going to get the endpoint UN256 here. This is for the single number. Next, we're going to get the endpoint ID UN256 array. This is for the multiple number requests. And last, we're going to need to generate a sponsor wallet. There's no specific sponsor wallet we pull from. We must generate it on our own. In the docs, it's referenced under the air node. Right here, I'm gonna do a quick paste and we'll share it in the video channel as well. And it'll take us right to the derived sponsor wallet address. What we'll need to do is copy this command and fill it in with our custom addresses. If you're on a Mac, you'll use it here. And if you're Windows, you have this option here. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this out and put a notepad for ease. I'm gonna go ahead and paste this down. And it's gonna ask us for a few addresses. 
here is going to ask us for the Airnode XPub address. So I'm going to go back to the providers, and you'll see that we have the XPub address for our notary. Make sure we have the notary. So I'm going to grab that. It's a very long number. Grab that. And I'm going to go ahead and paste that down here. Next, it's asking for the Airnode address. That's the same Airnode address that we used previously. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that and grab the Airnode address. Lastly, it's asking for the sponsor address. This is the address that we need to get sponsored. That is our contract address that we just deployed. So we're going to go over to Remix and grab our smart contract address. We're going to copy that, go back to the paste, go back to our notepad, and we're going to paste down our smart contract address. For simplicity, you can use any CLI of choice, but for this demo, I'm using PowerShell. I also like to do it in a single line, so I like to clear out everything in the front. So I'm going to clear this out and make this all single line. Make a little space to make sure that tag is there. And clear this out as well. I'll go ahead and turn on copy and open up PowerShell. And I'll run as administrator. And I'll go ahead and paste this down. And I'll hit enter. It'll download the necessary files and then generate us a sponsor wallet address. It's going to go ahead and grab that. And paste that into our contract. We are now ready to send this transaction. We'll send this out. We'll just aggressively send it so it goes faster. And success. Our parameters have been updated. There's just one more thing we have to do before we can request a number. We need to make sure we fund our sponsor wallet because that is the way we pay for the gas when we make our requests. Because we deployed on Mumbai, we're going to check our sponsor wallet on the Mumbai network. Just to make sure, we're going to go back to our CLI and we're going to grab our sponsor wallet. And we'll go to mumbai.polygonscan.com. We're going to go ahead and paste down our contract address. And you'll see that it's been generated. There's nothing in there. We're going to go ahead and send some funds to the contract. We're going to open up our MetaMask or any wallet of your choice. Send. Send it right to the contract. We're just going to put it with a little bit with 0.1 Matic to get things moving. The cost of gas varies for each chain to chain, and the amount of gas required per transaction changes as well. So it can vary for a couple transactions. And we've now sent some gas to our wallet. Let's go ahead and refresh the page. And you see now that we have some gas to request our random number. So let's go back to our contract. And now we can make our request. So we're going to make a single number request. We'll send that transaction. Wait for that confirmation. Great. Now we have to wait a few confirmations, depending on the chain, to see when we get our number. Because we made global public variables, we can see the numbers that we received. The QRNG UN256 and the QRNG UN256 array. Let's check our number. And we still haven't received it yet. So we have to wait for that transaction to come through. We'll check our number again. And you can see that we have now received a random number. You'll notice that this is a very large number. We can always bring it down to size with a modular. We'll make one more request with a make with a make request of size. We'll do a two int array so we can get two different numbers. We'll make that transaction happen. And it'll work the same way. We'll go ahead and go down, check our QRNG UN256 array. The difference here is that we'll have a number, so we'll have to pick the position. We'll check position zero. So I'll go ahead and click position zero and check. And you'll see that we have one unique number. And if we check position one for our two positions, you'll see that we have another unique number. And there you have it. This is how we can request random number from API3's QRNG random number generator. Thank you for checking us out.